I matched the book. <laughs> that was not intentional. When I left off, I was wondering, kind of working through what I would really need to make the Building Thinking Classrooms framework work for kindergarten students, really young mathematicians, and kind of curious about if this K-12 resource would actually be helpful. So with my, I guess, prior knowledge of working with kindergartners, I kind of thought through, like, what are the main challenges that the kids will have before they're able to engage in the process of building thinking classrooms. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it down below. That's kind of part one, part two. Now, where we left off was I was not really sure or kind of having trouble finding tasks that all of my students could access like low floor, high ceiling for kindergarten when their ranges are so different. And I understand that the mathematical knowledge is so different in all grade levels, but in most other grade levels, they at least have a base of being able to count knowing numbers, which is definitely not something that all of my students had yet when I started. So definitely I was working with, I was thinking about, okay, my biggest goal here is to get them to work together. So I did lots of non-curricular tasks, like building together, working together, drawing together that didn't really have anything to do with traditional math problems so that they could get used to working together and giving us time to start to learn a little bit more of our numbers and counting skills so we can engage in other activities. Since our kids, since my students are still so young, they need a lot of hands-on practice with counting and numbers to really be able to engage in, in, in problem solving. So that's definitely something I work through in my math stations, mini lessons, things of that nature to really kind of build them up. And previously, I had worked on, I had read the book Coral Counting and Counting Collections, which is an excellent book to read, especially for young mathematicians. And if you'd like me to speak more about that, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to do so. And I loved counting collections. I thought my, my kids really loved it. They were always super pumped to count collections. They liked working together. They liked being all over the classroom. So I was thinking that that might be a good entry point to merge what the kids are really working on and building thinking classrooms. So to start them off, I gave them each a little baggie with seven to 10 magnets. And I just said to the kids, count them. So they went off to their groups. When they went off, we picked our random groups. We went to our space. We just counted them. I didn't even give them the marker yet. I didn't want us to like cross over. And after they did that, I was like, okay, great. Show me how many you have. So that was really, really interesting to see how all of the kids kind of worked similarly or differently to show how many they had. So a lot of kids just did one-to-one -one matching, which is great because what we're working on. And some kids really started to understand the concept that but the last number is how many I have, and I don't really have to write all of the other numbers. And so this is kind of where I saw the magic start to happen. With the kids who realized that I don't have to write all the numbers, just the last one, when we got there, we really started to talk about what they did that was different than what most of our the other kids did, and how we might be able to do that next time. So I was definitely trying to merge the counting collections with building thinking classrooms, worked great. And I definitely think that's something I want to continue to do the same type of task with different things that they're counting, just because it brings in the hands on and the problem solving together. So it's definitely something I'm wanting to try. I also tried the how many squares problem with just nine squares. And that was definitely tricky for the kids. Pro, we could all count to nine and write our numbers, which was not something we could do with at the beginning of the year. Excited about that. That task was really tricky for them. So and in my next steps is to find other kind of ways to merge a hands-on type of task with the Building Thinking Classrooms framework so that more kids can engage in it and really learn from each other. I don't know what it is, but you can say the same thing as a teacher. Hundreds of times, we don't get it. But when another student explains it, bam, it's like they've never heard it before, this brand new information. Moving forward, I really do want to leverage that and continue to foster working together supportive groups with your teammate to solve problems. So where I'm getting my most of my ideas from is from Ucubed Counting Collections and the Enrich Math website. They have a lot of they have a lot of great resources on there that actually are appropriate for where my kids are. So if you have any great suggestions of where you're finding tasks for your young young learners, Please leave those down below and I'm excited to keep sharing our journey into building a thinking classroom and see where we go with it.